Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. Here in New Zealand, the roadside tethered goat was quite a common sight back in the 90s, so much so that some people almost think of it as Kiwiana. You don't see it as many these days, but still plenty of them out there. And there are recent laws and regulations around tethering goats that have changed to try and discourage the practice and at least give some added protection to those that are tethered. So let's dive straight into the welfare code and I will see you in a sec. All right, hi guys, welcome back to Says the Vet. I'm Dr. Says. So let's dive straight in. Now, a tethered goat refers to a goat that is tethered to one spot, usually by a halter or a collar. It's usually done to keep an area of grass grazed low and free of weeds. So roadside verges are really common to see them on. People will also tether goats sometimes just permanently restraining the cheeky monkeys that are really good at getting out, you know, when they jump fences, that sort of thing. But being so restrained does mean that there are strict rules around their management to try and protect those animals that are really very unable to help themselves if something goes wrong. Now there are also a number of other welfare concerns with this practice that is addressed in this legislation. And then a couple of additional thoughts from my own clinical experience um, that I will throw in there at the end. So here we go. Firstly, the legislation does recognise that goats are social animals. Social isolation is a welfare concern in itself, absolutely. And goats should be housed with at least one, ideally multiple companions, and ideally other goats. Now they are herd animals, so ideally those companions should be goats. But in lieu of this, another herd animal will suffice. So sheep, cattle, horses, they do the trick as well as a second best to other goats. They are very, very social inquisitive animals. They're sentient and intelligent. Now by nature, tethering is isolating an individual just because having multiple means their tethers would get tangled together. But if it is impossible for that goat to be allowed to live freely within a herd, then it should at least be near other goats that it can see and talk to even if it can't get close enough to interact with them. The Code of Welfare says that ideally they should not be tethered and you should try and find an alternative, but if you're going to tether them temporarily, then legally, they have to be checked on at least once every 12 hours, that's two times a day, and that's a minimum. If they kick their water over or get themselves tangled up, they can get into real distress very quickly, and even waiting for 12 hours can be quite a long time, so you can see where that element in the code comes from. Legally, they have to be placid and used to the area so that they're unlikely to get tangled and hurt themselves. They're not allowed to be able to get onto a road in the path of vehicles and they have to have food and water at all times and proper shelter from the extremities. Now proper shelter means large enough for the goat, it's dry, it's easily accessible at all times and it's well protected from the sun, wind and rain. So these little half barrels on a wet ground is not okay. Likewise you'll find some small metal shelters actually heat up like a furnace in there when it's hot and they're not appropriate for shade. So appropriate shelter you can be fined if you do have inappropriate shelter for them. Now if it's tethered by a collar, legally you have to make sure that it's the right size and that it's not cutting into the neck. Use a nice soft wide dog collar, not too tight and not too heavy. Chains are no good, they are heavy and they end up actually cutting into the skin over the top of the neck there over time just from the weight. Now be aware, it goes without saying, goat kids will grow up. So don't put a collar on them when they're a kid and then forget about it. It's terrible and very surprising how many times we see collars too tight and then the animals groan into them, cutting into the animal's neck all the way around, causing open wounds, it's, it's not acceptable. Now whatever system you've used to tether them needs to have a quick release mechanism, so quick release knots for example, or a clasp that comes undone with the flick of the thumb, so that you can free them in an instant if anything goes wrong. And they do have to be tethered in such a way that they can move about easily without excessive restriction. Now legally you are not allowed to tether at all anyone who is a kid, pregnant or lactating doe, or not 100% in health. If there's any physiological concerns there, they're not allowed to be tethered. So that would include uh, elderly goats that are struggling with certain issues on the inside, okay, coming with age, or of course anyone who's unwell. Now that's what the welfare code states. There's no opinions in there, that's not me coming at you with anything from myself, that's just what the legislation states. Some additional thoughts from my own clinical experience is that tethering restricts normal browsing behavior. Goats are not grazers. Their happy place is eating at least about eight centimeters above the ground. So long grass, bushels, low hanging branches, this is their happy place. 
And the nutritional requirements reflect this. It's not just behavior, it's what their body needs as well. They do need very high levels of fiber. And if they don't get it, they're prone to things like urinary crystals forming with the incorrect diet, prone to eating toxic plants as well. And they're exceptionally prone to going down with high parasite burdens. Gut worms live down low in the ground. So goats just have not evolved to be able to deal with gut worms naturally they should not be grazing down that low, they just don't do it when left to their own devices. So now imagine tethering a goat to one spot, forcing it to graze down low because you want that piece of grass to look nice, encouraging it to eat the weeds, not allowing it to browse its diet in a natural way. You can see how we're really setting ourselves up for potential health issues and distress there. So as you can see, the Welfare Code really addresses the absolute basics to protect a goat from hurting itself or physically suffering in a big way. And that's fantastic now that we have those basic requirements addressed by law. But I would urge you to really consider setting the bar maybe a little bit higher and thinking a little bit more about the social isolation aspect and restriction of natural behaviour. Is there possibly an alternative that could work on your property? If tethering really does feel essential for your goat, I hope that this has provided a framework for the basic obligations of how to meet their needs by law. All right guys, this episode was on request. I am always open to requests. Please don't forget to subscribe by hitting the emblem down below and um, thumbs up and comment over on the YouTube channel. Cheers and I will see you for the next one. Bye bye.